In this video I'm going to explain the differences between the scavenge pumps on three different versions of the M96 engine. The M96 engine was fitted to Porsche Carreras, GT3s, turbos, Boxsters and there are mainly two different types of the engine. There's what's known as the Metzger engine as fitted to the GT3s, turbos and GT2 and the non-Metzger engine which is the Carrera engine um, fitted to the Carreras, C4s, C4Ss and the Boxsters and Caymans. Now I'm just going to talk about the scavenge pumps here. The scavenge pumps are designed to take air and oil from the cylinder heads and return them to the sump. On the earlier air-cooled engines they used tubes to return them to the sump but on the later engines they moved to a more active system for getting the oil back to the sump. So I'm going to look at the differences the, between the Metzger and non-Metzger engine. The Metzger engine is derived from um, a few different race engines. Very expensive to build, very complicated. And I'll start off with the system for that. So what we have here is a cam carrier from a GT3 engine. So this is the, the cam cover. Just take the cover off. There you can see the camshafts. I won't go into detail on the differences in the in the cam carriers. Just put the cover down. So when this is fitted on the engine, this is the bottom side. So any oil which gets into this area, which is pumped into here, will collect down here. You can see down here, there are holes here, 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 and here. So it's split up into three compartments, basically one for each cylinder, and in each one there is a hole. That hole goes through to a gallery, which runs along the bottom here. This gallery has one hole at this end here, and another hole here. This hole here lines up with a hole on the cam cover, which is there, which then comes out down to there. So what we end up with when this is fitted on the engine is basically two holes down here, which go to the oil scavenge pump. This is the oil scavenge pump. There are two O-rings here for holes. These go onto the, onto the cam cover and the pump is driven by this here from the end of the exhaust camshaft just there using this drive here and then the gears in there pump the air and oil and the pump it out through that fitting there that then goes to the external oil tank now there are obviously two of these heads on the engine the heads are handed left and right and it means that the oil pumps are both um, at the rear of the car because they're both on where the chain drive is and the chain is driven from the same end on the engine. So they'll both come out at the rear of the car. Okay, so that is the same for the GT3 and the turbo in terms of the scavenge. I shall now move on to the Carrera engine. This is a cylinder head for a Carrera engine, which has got the camshafts removed from it at the moment. We can see here again the similarity that each head is split up into three sections and from each section there are drains. There's one here, two here and two here. These drains all go into this channel down here which you'll notice on this engine is sloping. So that's basically sloping downwards. This would be at the, the rear of the car with this head. So it slopes down to here. Now this channel is sandwiched between the head and the cam cover. So here is the, the other side of it. So you can see the channels there. If you look down here, there's a hole at the bottom there, which is a pickup. And the air and oil is picked up from this hole. There's a hole that's machined at the back of there and it comes out on this slot here which again goes to where the exhaust camshaft sits on there. And then the, the scavenge pump 
for this, which is this here, has two holes in the side, one there and one there, and it basically picks up, sucks the air and oil in through there, and sends it out through there back to the block. So there's no pipes required at all. It's all built in within the engine block. There's no machining of the casting required. There's no large holes going the length of it because the actual, the, the galley that makes it up is actually part of the, the head and the cam cover. So it's a, a much simpler design. But the one thing you will notice from this, whereas the Metzger engine picks up from both ends of the cylinder head, so it effectively has one pickup point here and one pickup point here. This Carrera engine only has one pickup and it's at the back of the engine. Um, it's using, basically relying on gravity and a slope to carry the oil down to this area down here. Now I, I covered this a bit in one of my other videos, so some of this will be reiterating. But basically this can cause problems. The, the heads on the Metzger engine, as I said, are different. They're handed and they, they both drive from the same end. On the Carrera engine, they use the same heads on both sides with different machining, which again saves parts, saves cost. As a result of that, the slope, whilst it's sloping towards the rear of the engine on one side, is sloping towards the front of the engine on the other side. This can cause a problem because under heavy braking, prolonged heavy braking, this, the angle of this slope can be overcome by the, the braking forces and cornering forces and you can end up with a build up of oil in this area which can cause problems. Porsche realised this when they were doing development for their motorsport engine. So they developed the X51 oil system which I shall describe next. To overcome the problem of not being able to remove the oil from the front of the engine under heavy braking and cornering, Porsche devised the X51 setup. This is a, a pump I've had made up because the X51 pump is no longer available, but the suction pipe is the standard Porsche part. So to fix this, what they did was drill a hole in the cover at this end, then run an external pipe the length of the cover and then basically do a tandem pump on the back of here. So instead of having a single stage, it's got two stages, so two suction sides, and they both return to the same place. So the return goes internally back to the sump as before. This gives much improved performance under braking. Now they only did this on one side of the engine. Um, the idea being that it's not a problem on the other side because you can spend a lot more time under moderate heavy braking than you do um, under accelerating because you don't have the power to maintain those forces for a long time. I have my suspicions that it might be because you can't easily fit one onto the other side because the uh, subframe gets in the way. And this was clearly designed after the original engine to solve a problem because you'll notice they're clearly using a fabricated external pipe Whereas on the Metzger engine, where it's designed in, it's all cast into the heads and is a much neater solution. So looking in detail at the pump. So this is the pump as before. So we have one inlet there, one inlet there, and there are two stacked rotors in there where the inlet sides are separated and the outlet sides are common. And then it returns the oil through there back to the sump. Finally, I just want to do a quick comparison of the two scavenge pumps to show the differences between them. The obvious difference being that the Metzger pump is a two-stage and the Carrera pump is a single stage. But other than that, so there are some quite interesting differences between the two, which show how the engineers were taking the ideas from the Metzger engine, from the earlier engines, and basically making them in a cost-reduced, simpler form with what I think is some quite neat engineering. So we'll start off with the Metzger pump. Just turn this over, take it apart. So the pump has two main parts held together with four bolts. The bolts are end up on the inside of the engine. Take this cover off here. So there's the drive. So there's a drive gear which has a keyway in it. The 
center drive slides out from the gear and is pressed in. So you have three parts right there. You've got the drive, the key, and the gear. And then obviously the machine plate on here. And then here are the two gears internally. So the this section connects through to here. This one goes through to here. And then as the gears rotate, the volume of air and oil is passed around here on this side. And then also around that way around around here on this side. So you have one gear driving the two stages and the air and oil passes through these channels here. Now to seal this onto the engine, there are two O-rings on here which seal the, uh, the scavenge ports. There's an O-ring required to join the two parts of the pump together because the join on the two parts of the pump is on the outside of the engine. And then finally there's another O-ring on here. So there are four O-rings. The gears have three parts for this one, and then you've got a gear and a drive, and a, a gear and a well, axle on there, and then also a complex machined part for that. So that's the, the Metzger pump. I'll now move on to the Carrera pump, and we'll show the, the differences on it. So here is the much simpler Carrera pump. Now, one of the most fundamental differences on this is that this is a G-rotor pump rather than a gear pump. So we'll see how, how that works when this comes off. So again, it's a two-piece design with the, the, the bolts holding the two parts together. On this one, they're on the outside of the engine, whereas with the other one, they were on the inside of the engine. So it's important that these bolts are sealed so the oil doesn't leak out through them. Just turn the, turn the pump over. So we'll see the two machined parts. Just get the cover off here. So we'll see the cover for this compared to the, the housing on this. Massively simpler part. Much smaller, much lighter, much cheaper to produce. And then inside we have one gear, one G-rotor, so this just rotates in here, and as the, as the gear rotates, it moves the air and oil from one side of the cavity across to the other. So take that apart, and again, the housing on the other side, nice and simple. So there's four basic parts plus the bolts which hold it together. And in terms of sealing it to the engine, again, some quite clever ideas on here. The, the two ports, which go onto the engine, the inlet and the outlet. There's no seals on those. They're a slide fit into the engine, but they, if they're not absolutely air and oil tight, it doesn't matter because it's just internal on the engine. So that saved two O-rings on there. The fitting between the two parts of the pump, the seal between them is inside of the O-ring, which goes onto the engine. So they can get away with no O-ring on there either. So they've gone down from three gears, drive, drive shaft which has to be keyed, four O-rings, down to two simple housings, two simple gears. So you can see how much simpler, neat design it is. So you can see they were very much pressed on the, on the costs and there's some, some nice engineering gone into that. Okay, so I hope that's been useful. I'll probably do another video looking at the differences between the other parts of the oil system in the near future. Thanks for watching.